The girl slowly lifts the hem of her dress to give the 50-year-old king a visual feast. She takes the king's ring and kisses it, then runs it across her legs before handing it to the king. Henry, newly divorced and depressed, is awakened by the whimsy of the girl. The next day, he sends a gift to the girl. It's lovely. You must thank his majesty. You can thank him yourself. Hemi visits the girl's room at night just to make out with her, and the girl slowly walks over to him and undresses to thank the king for the gift. At the tender age of 18, Catherine Howard became the new love of Henry VIII. Henry insisted on marrying young Catherine as his fifth queen, even though Catherine was in Boleyn's cousin. Henry didn't care to keep his young wife happy. Henry gave her expensive jewelry and lavish gifts every day, and it's clear that he's pampering her. I come here this day to introduce to you my new wife, Queen Catherine. It seems incredible to have obtained such a perfect jewel of womanhood, who bears towards me such perfect love, desired fruits of such a marriage. <laughs> to Queen Catherine. Queen <laughs> Henry's favor has given Catherine a great honor. Catherine, of course, is very understanding and performs a variety of shows every night to keep the king's heart in her hands. And Henry, under the seduction of his beautiful wife, has left his two previous queens behind it is my intention to settle upon her all lands and manors which formerly belonged to Jane Seymour. Within a month, Henry had given Catherine a room full of treasures, but it's not just material things that he favors Catherine with. He also acknowledges her presence to his children. He introduced Catherine to his most precious son, Edward. This is my new queen, Catherine. Say hello to me. Hello, your majesty. Oh, he's such a sweet boy. The lovely Edward is a sweetheart and gets along well with his stepmother and then his youngest daughter, Princess Elizabeth. Your Majesty, I am honored to be presented to you and wish you every joy and happiness. Catherine was delighted by Elizabeth's courtesy. She immediately took off her necklace and gave it to the princess. Elizabeth thanked her and left. Henry, on the other hand, stared at his daughter's back for a moment. I wonder if he was thinking of Elizabeth's mother. Catherine thought she was a queen and an honorable woman, but she doesn't get any respect from Princess Mary. Her 18-year-old stepmother tried to dominate her stepdaughter, who was for years older than her. My dearest wish that you and I may be kind and loving and warm to each other. After all, Lady Mary, you are now my stepdaughter. Mary observed her younger stepmother's frivolous gestures. She didn't think her stepmother had any of the dignity of a queen, so she didn't know how to honor her. Queen Catherine offered Mary an invitation to come to the palace more often, but Mary declined and left with a curtsy. She didn't give a damn about the frivolous queen. When it came time for the Christmas festivities, Catherine once again approached Mary with great enthusiasm, but Mary only smiled a little and then thanked the king for her gifts, which made Catherine roll her eyes. However, Henry, who is in a joyful mood, does not realize Catherine's displeasure at the moment. To emphasize his kindness, Henry invited his ex-wife, Anne of Cleves, to the palace for Christmas. Anne's elegance is respected by all. Even the fussy Princess Mary appreciated her. Catherine welcomed Anne with a smile as a gesture of goodwill, and then asked her to share her experience as a stepmother, and said that both princesses were sensible, smart and beautiful. The princesses also respected her, so she had a very good relationship with them. Catherine could only laugh in embarrassment. The next morning, Catherine went to Mary in a rage, and asked her why she didn't treat her as the Queen of England with the same respect that she had shown to the former Queen Anne. But Mary responded by saying that Catherine was no match for Lady Anne. She carries herself with great dignity, and also modesty, and desires nothing more than to please the king, her lord. I think you desire almost nothing else than pleasure pleases you, it seems, to do nothing but wear pretty clothes and dance. Mary said that everyone thought that Catherine was a frivolous queen, and did not act in the manner of a mother of a country. It's just that people didn't expose her because of her status, and the king only married her because of her fertility. And since Catherine is still not pregnant, it's only a matter of time before she's abandoned by the king. I think you're jealous. You're jealous because you're much older than me and you're still not married. <laughs> Perhaps you'll never be married and will grow older maid. Catherine's words both angered and sad to Mary, although Mary had arranged for marriage many times. But for one reason or another, she was still unmarried at the age of almost 30. When she thought of this, Mary cried even harder. But the young and ignorant Queen Catherine didn't take Mary's warning seriously. Little did she know that she would soon pay the price. The aging king refused to sleep with his wife on the grounds of exhaustion, leaving her alone. Then the lady-in-waiting immediately slipped under the queen's covers. As Catherine's former best friend, 
The lady in waiting says she misses the time when the four of them used to play together. The one for you and the other mine. Although Catherine warns her best friend that evil will come out of her mouth, she can't help but imagine what she'd do without the king's favor for the rest of the night. The young queen is full of energy, but the old king was not well. Henry's leg has returned, and the wound is so bad he can't get out of bed. But, being the most honorable of men, he ordered that the matter be kept secret from the public, even from the queen. The king even sent his valet Culpepe to bring Catherine gifts every day to calm her down. But the king's action was a bad padlock invites a picklock. Culpepe, who spent his days at Henry's side, had already fallen in love with the beautiful queen. Culpepe was ready to use this opportunity to get the queen. Culpepe used his good looks to seduce the queen's lady in waiting and made her willing to act as a matchmaker between him and the queen. The lady in waiting pays the queen's friend to find out about her indulgent past. The queen had been alone for more than 10 days and was lonely every night. So they begin their plan. That day, Culpepe came to deliver the queen's gifts as usual and said, the king was still unable to see her. Catherine couldn't stand it any longer. It is 10 days since I've been allowed in his presence. Why will he not see me? Why? Has he taken a mistress, Master Culpepe? Is that why he will not see me? Culpepe's silence reinforced Catherine's suspicions. Seeing Catherine's heartbreak, Culpepe immediately began to confess his love. You know I would do anything in the world, anything, to bring you comfort and make you happy. After Culpepe bowed and retired, the friend and maids looked at each other and started to help. After dismissing the crowd, the ladies maid told Catherine that Mr. Culpepe had told her in private that he had fallen head over heels in love with Catherine and that he was obsessed with her day and night. These words undoubtedly sent ripples through Catherine's mind and caused her to think of them late at night when she could not sleep. The next day, the lady in waiting brought it up again. Just like that other one, coming to you at night. A secret. Nobody else need ever know. Catherine smiled at these words. Her loneliness was already overflowing. Late at night, Culpepe followed the queen's best friend through a secret passage to Catherine's room. They were experiencing happiness with each other in the dim moonlit room. The queen, irrigated by a man, was a new woman. Not the dead woman she had been the day before. King Henry, who has been struggling for more than half a month, finally recovers and immediately dresses up to go to the Queen. Henry looked at Catherine's happy face and was disappointed, but he was soon coaxed by Catherine with a few words. Henry slipped the gemstone ring onto Catherine's ring finger. He then whispered in her ear another reward. But tonight I'll visit your bedchamber, and nothing would please me more than for you to conceive my child. Although Henry was over 50, he wanted another son. Catherine felt the pressure. If she didn't give birth to a son, would she end up like her predecessors? But no sooner had the worry passed through her mind than Catherine was eyeballing Culpepe again. On the other hand, Henry suddenly finds his ex-wife in, and this kind, dignified and caring woman seems to feel Henry's need for warmth at this moment. It seems that this mature woman is more capable of soothing Henry's soul than the pampered little wife. I come to your bed tonight. What Henry didn't know was that his doting wife felt the same need for companionship at night as it did. I want to see him again, as you wish. I only urge your majesty to be careful when you... What? Lady Rochford, don't you think I know how to meddle with a man without conceiving a child? 